committee will come to order. If you would please rise, raise your right hand, I will begin by swearing you in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Let the record show that the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Uh, thank you, and you may be seated. It was very clear at this point that there was, uh, let's just say, a different channel in operation in relations to Ukraine, one that was domestic and political in nature, and that was very different from the channel or the loop, however you like it, that I and my colleagues were in, where we were focused on bilateral relations and US foreign policy towards Ukraine. And these two things had diverged at this point. Uh, fair enough. Um, he indicated you were upset. And so I was upset with him that he wasn't fully telling us about all of the meetings that he was having. And he said to me, but I'm briefing the president. I'm briefing Chief of Staff Mulvaney. I'm briefing Secretary Pompeo, and I've talked to Ambassador Bolton. Who else do I have to deal with? And the point is we have a robust interagency process uh, that deals with Ukraine. It includes Mr. Holmes. It includes Ambassador Taylor as the charge in Ukraine. It includes a whole load of other people. But it struck me when yesterday, when you put up on the screen Ambassador Sondland's emails, and who was on these emails, and he said, these are the people who need to know that he was absolutely right because he was being involved in a domestic political errand. And we were being involved in national security foreign policy, and those two things had just diverged. So he was correct, and I had not put my finger on the, at that at the moment, but I was irritated with him and angry with him that he wasn't fully coordinating. And I did say to him, Ambassador Sondland, Gordon, I think this is all going to blow up, and here we are. Room in the meeting in which he uh, asserted this to me, Based on questions and statements I have heard, some of you on this committee appear to believe that Russia and its security services did not conduct a campaign against our country, and that perhaps, somehow, for some reason, Ukraine did. This is a fictional narrative that has been perpetrated and propagated by the Russian security services themselves. The unfortunate truth is that Russia was the foreign power that systematically attacked our democratic institutions in 2016. This is the public conclusion of our intelligence agencies confirmed in bipartisan congressional reports. It is beyond dispute, even if some of the underlying details must remain classified. The impact of the successful 2016 Russian campaign remains evident today. Our nation is being torn apart. Truth is questioned. Our highly professional and expert career foreign service is being undermined. Independence Square to launch what became known as the Revolution of Dignity. Contrary to standard procedure, the embassy received no readout of that call, and I was unaware of what was discussed until the transcript was released on September 25th. Upon reading the transcript, I was deeply disappointed to see that the president raised none of what I understood to be our interagency agreed upon foreign policy priorities in Ukraine, and instead raised the Biden Burisma investigation and referred to the theory about CrowdStrike and its supposed connection to Ukraine in the 2016 election. ...and rising competitors in the world, we have no better friends. I then heard President Trump ask, so he's gonna do the investigation. Ambassador Sondland replied that he's gonna do it, adding that President Zelensky will do anything you ask him to do. ...correct role in Ukrainian diplomacy. On April 25th, Yvonne, I then took the opportunity to ask Ambassador Sondland for his candid impression of the President's views on Ukraine. In particular, I asked Ambassador Sondland if it was true that the President did not give a expletive about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland agreed that the President did not give an expletive about Ukraine. I asked why not, and Ambassador Sondland stated that the President only cares about big stuff. I noted there was big stuff going on in, in Ukraine, like a war with Russia. And Ambassador Sondland replied that he meant big stuff that benefits the president, like the Biden investigation that Mr. Giuliani was pushing. And he added that the president should let him get sentenced, play the racism card. Yeah, he clarified whether he was in Ukraine or not. Uh, and he said, yes, I'm here in Ukraine. And then Ambassador Sondland said, uh, um, said yeah, he loves your ass, he'll do anything you want. He said he's, he can do the investigation. So you heard President Trump ask Ambassador Sondland, is he going to do the investigation? Yes, sir. What was Ambassador Sondland's response? Uh, he, he said, oh yeah, he's gonna do it. Uh, he'll do anything you ask. 
also, I believe... Uh... It was part of a conversation about the things uh, that uh, Mr. Giuliani was saying very frequently in public. Um, we saw them um, often, uh, or saw him often, uh, on television making these statements. And I had already brought to Ambassador Bolton's um, attention the attacks, the smear campaign against Ambassador Ivanovich and expressed uh, great regret about how this was unfolding and, um, in fact, the shameful way in which uh, um, Ambassador Ivanovich was, um, was being smeared and attacked. And I'd asked if there was anything that we could do about it. And Ambassador Bolton had looked pained, um, basically uh, indicated with body language that there was nothing which we could do about it. And he then, in the course of that discussion, said that Rudy Giuliani was a hand grenade that was going to blow everyone up. Did you understand what he meant by that? I did, actually. What did he mean? Well, I think he, he meant that, obviously, what Mr. Giuliani was saying was pretty explosive in any case. Um, he was frequently on television making quite incendiary remarks about um, everyone um, involved in this, and that he was clearly pushing forward issues and ideas that would, uh, you know, probably come back to haunt us. And, in fact, I think that that's where we are today. In fact, there were other people in the room in the meeting in which he uh, asserted this to me. You know, I've seen hatred for political reasons, specifically on June 14th, 2017, at a ball field in Virginia. And I've seen hatred in war. And I know that hatred blinds people. I've been in war, and I've studied war. And coups create division. And it's time for this phase of the publicly announced and proclaimed Democrat coup to end. No, I think that what uh, Dr. Wenstrup said was um, very powerful um, about the importance of uh, overcoming hatred and uh, certainly partisan um, you know, division. And it's unfortunate that um, Congressman Turner and Ratcliffe have uh, both left as well. Because I think all of us who came here um, under a legal um, obligation, also felt we had a moral obligation to do so. We came as fact witnesses. When I was referring to questions that I'd heard, it was in the context of the deposition uh, that I gave on October 14th, because I was very worried about the turn uh, in which um, some of the questions were taking. And I understand that the point is being made about uh, individuals, as, as you've just said, uh, Dr. Wenstrup, and that these articles lay out uh, taking different positions in uh, our elections. I don't believe that there should be any interference of any kind in our election. I think it was unfair uh, for people to already call the election and to uh, make attacks also on uh, candidate Trump and on President Trump. And I know that this has put a huge cloud over this presidency and also over our whole democratic system. That's actually why as a non-partisan person and as an expert on Russia, and an expert on Vladimir Putin and on the Russian security services, I wanted to come in to serve the country to try to see if I could help. Proceed with today's hearing. In the coming days, Congress will determine what response is appropriate. If the President abused his power and invited foreign interference in our elections, if he sought to condition, coerce, extort, or bribe a vulnerable ally into conducting investigations to aid his re-election campaign, and did so by withholding official acts, a White House meeting, or hundreds of millions of dollars of needed military aid, it will, be up, it will be for us to decide whether those acts are compatible with the office of the presidency. Next day, July 26th, in Kyiv, Holmes served as a note taker. From the Russia hoax to this shoddy Ukrainian sequel, the Democrats got caught. Let's hope they finally learn a lesson, give their conspiracy theories a rest, and focus on governing for a change. In addition, Mr. Chairman, pursuant to House 